Bo Hunter Rising laughed. Uh, Masai the Weaver laughed. Those guys were good players. Hunter Rising is a really good player. It's just the Michigan State's depth is so deep. These guys can't get on the field. Now, what I, I, I would never suggest this for a Spartan, but there is a rambling wreck down there in Ann Arbor. You can go down there and get a starting spot. As a matter of fact, there are probably 30 and 40-year-olds that could start for that team right now. So, whatever. Good luck with that. All right. So, uh, unfortunately, with McSorley in the Big Ten East, I, I think that the championship will actually be the Penn State game. The Big Ten East championship game will be that October 13th game against uh, Penn State. And uh, I think Dan Tony, I think Coach Day, D will figure it out. I think that he's got a lot of film. They're going to miss that running back there in, in, um, in um, Happy Valley. And I know, shocker, I've got Michigan State in the college football playoff against David and uh, Goliath. David, Michigan State's going to play the role of David in this one, and we've got to figure out a way to – that freshman quarterback at Alabama came straight off the bench and just destroyed Georgia in that national championship game. And you got three more years with him. With all of that talent – see, the one thing that has been a problem at Alabama is they've never been able to recruit a quarterback. Their defense – is those guys are just sick. They're offensive linemen. They're wide receivers. Calvin Ridley. This they just reload just constantly. But they've never had a quarterback. Now you want to see domination. That quarterback who just won that national championship with that defense and the rest of those skill players around him. Literally, the rest of the country has zero chance next season. And I'm saying that against my beloved Spartans, who I believe are the second best team in the country right now are not going to be able to go up there and do anything with with Alabama. So I've got Alabama beating Michigan State in the college football playoff. No score because I just don't want to – I don't even want to get into that. So Michigan State fans, be ready for a deep run in January. But ultimately, I believe Nick Saban will – conquer his seventh national championship and just more domination by a former Spartan, of course. So, you know, shout out to Coach Saban. Love to have you on, Coach. Whatever. All right, let's get on. Detroit Tigers. If if no, none of you remember this, and I know you probably don't, on August 31st, the Detroit Tigers traded Justin Upton to the Los Angeles uh the Anaheim Angels, I think they are. Anaheim Angels, yeah. And and so everybody's like, well, I don't know. We're just killing cap space or whatever, trying to get some room. Okay, fast forward to the 2018 season. Everybody wants cap space. I got it. But you've got to have a plan. The Detroit Tigers are just like the Detroit Lions. These are such poorly ran organizations. Now, if you go back a little bit, before Pudge Rodriguez got to Detroit, before any of the big name people got there, nobody wanted to come to Detroit Lions. I mean, to Detroit Tigers. They were awful, like the Lions. They were awful. Nobody wants to come there. No free agents. And it took the Detroit Tigers to way overpay for Pudge Rodriguez before you get Maglio Ordonez and and all of the guys that uh, the Gambler, Kenny Rogers, and all those guys that came in and helped. Um, get Detroit to the to the uh, World Series in 2006, they had to way overpay for Pudge Rodriguez. And I think that's what the ultimate last what the Detroit Lions are going to, you're going to end up paying, well, they already did that with Reggie Bush, four years, 24 million. It's just ridiculous. But you're going to have to way overpay. You're going to have to go out and get a cornerback or a um, middle linebacker, uh, somebody, a big name splash, and you're going to have to pay way more than what he's worth so that some other free agents are going to come in and say, hey, look, if they can go there, I can go there. That's what it's going to take, just like the Detroit Tigers. But fast forward to 2018, they trade Justin Upton to the Anaheim Angels. And I want to just read to you the 2018 projected starting lineup for the Detroit Tigers outfield. <sighs> this is really... Mikey Matuk. Mikey Matuk. 
Now, that sounds like he might be a double-A player somewhere. That's the Detroit Light Tigers 2018 opening day starting outfielder. Another outfielder for them is Nick Castellanos. A lot of you are going to know that they are moving Nick Castellanos off third to the outfield. Don't know if he can play there or not. Solid bat, good player, but definitely not uh, in his wheelhouse, that's for sure. And finally, uh, Leonis Martin. I am not kidding you. This is the starting um, outfield for the Detroit Tigers on 2000, in 2018 on April 1st. Listen to this one more time. Mikey Matook, Nick Castellanos, and Leonis Martin. Who is running this team? Literally, I can sit on my couch and do a better job with these people. This is in, this. If you are in the state of Michigan and you're watching this, I need you to really stop and think about what these organizations are doing to your fan base. If you just want to be entertained, I can get you a garage band put together and you can come over and just listen to them play music outside. If you honestly expect your team to be in the running, in any kind of way, you need to move out of this state because who's ever running these organizations are not, they don't have your best interest at in heart. They just don't care. They, they, or, or they're so inept that it's just, it's just not in the, you know, just a side note, the, the best ran organization in, in the state of Michigan, everyone knows, is the um, Detroit Red Wings. Now, Ken Holland, a couple of years ago, decided to sign. Uh, Nick Lindstrom. Now, a lot of fans were saying that Nick Lindstrom is really good. Okay, it, I, I'm not an avid um, hockey fan. If the Detroit Red Wings go deep into the playoffs, conference championship, or a Stanley Cup Finals, then I watch that. But I'm not a, a, a big NHL guy. But I, I do know enough to know that when you have a 36-year-old defensive lineman that's your team captain... Fans are are, are uh, nostalgic about all of the championships that he helped bring, and he's one of our guys. Okay, listen, if you if if it's old home week, then that that's something totally different. If you're trying to win championships, you don't sign a, a twenty a thirty six year old defensive lineman to twenty four million dollars. You just don't do that. And so now look where they're at. Look where the Detroit Red Wings are at. They're right in the same. They are all in the same cab. Lions, Tigers, Red Wings, Pistons, they all stink. If you live in this state, I'm sorry for you. This is just an awful sports. Detroit fans think that this is a great sports state. It's not. It's not. They're, look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're an expansion team. Detroit is one of the original teams in the history of the National Football League who's never played in the Super Bowl. The Jacksonville Jaguars have played in two championship games, more than the Detroit Lions. Expansion. How's that possible? We were so bad. The laughing stock of the league. And look at us. We're right back in it. So, whatever. Uh, Zimmerman and and Fulmer should be good. They should be solid for the Detroit uh, Tigers. Their, their rotation. They should be really good for them. I think that both of them will be healthy. They both had uh, nagging issues during the offseason. Uh, Zimmerman had surgery. So, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that uh, Zimmerman and um, uh, Fulmer should be good for the season. Now, the other three starters for the Detroit Tigers, and I am not kidding about this, Boyd, Norris, and Mike Fires. those names don't instill much faith in me at all. I, and I'm not a Tigers fan. I, I really don't care. I used to be, again, until I sat back and thought, but I'm just not a Tigers fan anymore. I believe that this is, uh, a, again, they're lined up for what will be a, a embarrassing season for them and, and for their fans. I think they'll finish 74 and 88. I Go back and watch this tape at the end of the year, and we'll see how close I was. But I got them 74 and 88, and uh, – Miguel Cabrera is coming to the end of his career. They should have shopped him a while ago. You would have got a lot of, you know, Detroit Tiger fans are like, man, don't send uh, Miggy. Do you want to win? Just tell me that. Do you want to win? Because Miguel Cabrera is not going to help you win. Well, Miguel Cabrera, his, he has a name, and that name can command trade value. 
you could have got some other players in there to help you win, but you're not going to win with Miguel Cabrera. You're not going to win with Victor Martinez in the starting lineup. These guys are not the type of guys you're going to win with. So 74 and 88, just an embarrassment for the Troy Tigers and their fans, but whatever. Moving on, let's get to Michigan State basketball. As a lot of you know that follow me on Twitter or whatever, you know that uh, I was all in for this season. You know, I, I made the statement that, with all due respect to the teams that Magic and Mateen led, uh, this team, and I still stand by this, they have more talent than those teams. You know, Charlie Bell, Mateen Cleaves, uh, A.J. Granger, Morris Peterson, Aloysius Saganye, Andre Hudson, those guys were blue-collar workers. They were just workers, and they just wanted to win, and they just was nose to the grindstone workers, and, and I love them. All those guys. I love Michigan State. But these guys right here, Miles Bridges, Jaron Jackson, Nick Ward, Cassius Winston, these guys have so much talent. They have so much talent. It is an embarrassment of riches that the, the, that the Michigan State Spartans have in basketball. And people will be like, well, it was such a distraction because of what was going on at the university. No, 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 no. Rewind. Before all this got came out, they played Duke. You're like, Duke, Duke's Duke. Well, Duke's been getting punished in the ACC by bad teams. Michigan State lost that game, and if you remember correctly, Marvin Bagley got poked in the eye and didn't play in the entire second half. So they were Duke was a pretty good team before that. When he goes out, they're just really not a good team, and Michigan State could not beat them. And then you fast forward to the Ohio State game. Ohio State. This is the, the, the Ford Festiva of basketball programs. And they go in there and just get pot hube. Oh, my God. That, the level of embarrassment that was that after that game, I, I, I haven't felt that. You know, how do you go in and be down 25 to Diop, Giop, whatever his name is? He's terrible. These guys are awful. Whatever. Then, then, the, the, Icing on the cake. They lose by 10 points to Michigan at home. 10 points at home to Michigan. There is no leadership. Now, the media has branded Miles Bridges as the leader of that team, but we already know there's – I'm not taking shots at Miles Bridges. He's a good basketball player. He's a better person. I've seen a lot of stuff on him. He's a great person. All these guys are quality people, and they're Spartans. But when it comes to March – and it comes time to lace them up and go out there and, and get a trophy, this team doesn't have that. They don't have that pedigree. They just don't have it. They turn the ball over too much. There's no leader on this team. Somebody needs to step up. I'm not going to – you already know me. I'm a homer. I'm the biggest homer there is. But – and I, I got Michigan State in the national championship game this year. But reality is I know that when it comes time in a – in an Iowa State in 2000, down 14 to Marcus Pfizer or down to Eton Thomas, when you have a halftime, when you need a player just to step up and, like, dog, who's going to lead this team? You know Mateen Cleese, Charlie Bell, Mo Pete. You know those guys got together like, look, let's go get this. I just don't see that on this team. I don't see it. It's the most talented team, like I said, that Coach has had in his tenure, but there's definitely something missing. There's absolutely something missing. So, I'm going to say that they, honestly, all feelings aside, I think they lose the in the Elite Eight to Cincinnati. Uh, if you haven't watched Cincinnati this year, get out and look at them because they're pretty good. I got uh, Cincinnati winning 81-77 um, in the Elite Eight. So, tough one for that. Now, a lot... We're going to uh, talk just a minute about the trade in for the Pistons. The Detroit Pistons signed or traded for Blake Griffin. And then Blake Griffin gets on there and has a breakdown about how he wants to play for a team that wants him. And all that was code for. You know, it's funny because I was around 